Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're doing another episode of Talking Heads with my good friend Alan the Charmer Charlesworth. <laughs> Say hello, hello Alan. Good to be here. Alan is from the Indie Ocean, as we've said before, purveyor of all things indie and Xbox Live Arcade. You should totally check out his YouTube channel, he has awesome <laughs> Let's Plays. And we're much. going to be discussing the idea of the loss of the lose condition in gaming. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with the term, a lose condition is a term applied to any sort of game, from video games, board games, card games, sports, and it is the point where you have lost that instance of the game, and you need to go back and start all the way over from the beginning. So it's not when you die and you have to reload from a checkpoint or even restart the level, it is if you want to keep playing the game, you have to go all the way back to the beginning. So, we've uh, had this one in the pipeline for a while. So, uh, Alan, would you care to open us up on this? What do you think about the, the lose condition? Is it actually diminishing or is it just changing? I think it's diminishing. Um, it's a pretty conspicuous um, absence in most modern games, or at least mainstream big budget games. And um, I think it's to do with the evolution of the form, if I may deploy such a pretentious term. Um, you may. But, <laughs> uh, I think it's connected to the way that games now are much more narrative driven and are, are much more story based than they were traditionally. Um, I think the, the lose condition is something of an archaism and mm. thus it's fading out. Whether that's a good thing or not is a matter more for debate, but I think it is deteriorating yeah. as an inevitable side effect of the way games are changing now. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because that um, leads me quite nicely into my first point, which is that the the lose condition is based quite a lot around the idea of save games and mm. the idea that if you lose the game, what would previously been a lose condition still says game over and it boots you back to the main menu, but you can then just reload a save. Yeah. And um, that kind of also ties in with a pet peeve that I have with video games these days, which is the fact that they still use save points in some genres. The JRPG is hell for this. <laughs> and it, it just very, it very much annoys me because they were introduced as a limitation of the uh, hardware at the time. If you wanted to preserve the game at a certain state, a uh, save point allowed them to assume certain things and go on from there. It was all very technical. But uh, that was the basic thrust of it. And that, I think, in many regards, the creation of save games started the decline of the lose condition. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, leads to another interesting point, which is what we're seeing nowadays, which is almost a replacement for the lose condition, which is the Iron Man mode. I mean, uh, my viewers will know that I do a lot of stuff on Paradox games, and one of their big things at the moment is the Iron Man mode, where you have one save which updates frequently, so you can't just go back and reload if you hit a bad condition or a lose condition. And uh, I think it, that's an interesting point to raise that. And the other one is, as you say, with narrative-driven games. Can you imagine playing an Elder Scrolls game for 90 <laughs> hours... And you accidentally <laughs> wander off a cliff and die. <laughs> and then that's it. 90 hours of progress gone. Yeah, indeed. Um, some games just don't lend themselves to it. And this is something that we didn't see back in the days when a lose condition was actually a thing, a ubiquitous thing. Um, because I think it originated really with arcades back in the 80s up to maybe early 90s, but definitely the 80s, um, when games were still very much derived from the arcade format, where having a set number of lives is there to get you putting coins into the machine, mm. basically. It's not entirely dissimilar to some of the free-to-play models now, to keep a drip feed of money coming in from the player, just instead of you know, being over the course of weeks or months as it is now, it was, you know, 20 minutes in the arcade. Um, but I think as as games have completely changed and become a longer term sort of home entertainment, that kind of format has just completely gone out of the window. And that's a good thing, as you say, putting dozens of hours into a game to then have to start over when you 
accidentally cast the wrong spell on yourself would be absolutely wretched. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting that you brought up the Iron Man mode, because that is something that's started rising. Well, it, it started a year or two ago, really, um, with some of the indie stuff, like um, the Binding of Isaac was a big one. FTL was another big one. Yeah. Where there's a definite lose state. And if you hit that state, then you're done and you start over. Mm -hmm. And I think the growing popularity of Iron Man, um, combined with those other examples, shows that there is actually a market for this out there. And for me, that's one of the big arguments in favour of um, trying to reinstate the lose condition in games, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think, there's a lot um, of moaning that, that games today are too easy because you can't fail them. Um, and I think that there's obviously a market for this. The Iron Man thing is very popular. It's possibly the most popular mode in the newer XCOM remake, for instance. Oh, yes, yeah, definitely. I think most people play it on Iron Man. So I, I think this is something that there's a market for. And the fact that it's so popular in indie or at least lower budget games... Um, reflects that people aren't finding something they need in big budget mainstream games. I think it's interesting that you brought up uh, FTL and the Binding of Isaac as well, because the lose condition is especially interesting when applied to roguelike games. Mm. As you say, that one of the big reasons why the lose condition is diminished is because if you sink dozens and dozens and dozens of hours into a game, and then you need to go back and just repeat that same huge period of gameplay again just to get back to where you were that's not satisfying but what mm. things like uh, FTL, uh, Binding of Isaac, Spelunky what those do is when you hit the lose condition you get a whole new world to explore you get a whole new sequence of events now granted uh, in many cases it's the same events cut up into a different sequence but that does still create a new challenge and it means that the lose condition instead of becoming a source of frustration it is frustration because you're you failed and it the game has made it quite clear that you failed but it's saying don't worry here's a new instance here's something new here's something fresh give it another try mm -hmm. and it's just something that people i think tend to forget is that games like sonic the hedgehog super mario brothers all those classic stuff you could knock those out in an hour a couple of hours it's not a huge investment of time to repeat the bits of the game that you've already done. Whereas in something like Skyrim, where you could quite happily sink over a hundred hours of gameplay into it, then having to go through all of those quests again just to be able to get a shot at the final boss, not fun. No. I mean, I think it's more of an issue, and the, the examples that people tend to complain about are the short ones, the likes of things like Call of Duty, Halo, that kind of thing, where the campaign mode is only going to be about four or five hours anyway. Yeah. Um, and that essentially it's impossible to fail. And those, of course, don't hang on to the archaic RPG save mechanic that you mentioned earlier. They have a good auto-save system, which means every few steps, basically, your progress is saved. So it's almost like just have you heard that that routine by Daro Breen where he talks about how other media don't lock you out of the later yes. parts yes yes books don't lock the last chapters until you've demonstrated your understanding of the book and let's, so on let's pause that moment um, for just there because i'm going to show that video in the final production I love saying what I'm going to say next because not just for the people who cheer in support of me but also those who will silently judge me for this, right? Very simple. I love video games. I love video games for this reason over all other art forms. They do a thing which no other art form does, right? No other art form does. You cannot be bad at watching a movie. You cannot be bad at listening to an album. But you can be bad at playing a video game and the video game will punish you and deny you access to the rest of the video game. <laughs> no other art form does this. You've never read a book and three chapters in, the book is gone. What are the major themes of the book so far? <laughs> You've got, well, I, I, I don't know, I wasn't uh, paying close to... Ah, Jesus, come on! I think that with the short 
campaigns that are basically unlosable, and not only unlosable in the sense of a, a final failure condition, but unlosable in the sense that you only lose a couple of minutes of progress if something goes wrong. Mm. Um, I think that's an example of something that Dara wasn't necessarily intending to point out. That some games now are so close to other forms of media, to things like films, narrative media, mm. that it becomes ludicrous to lock out any content, to have any kind of failure condition. And you're just kind of going through the motions. Um, busy work, basically. It, it's like you're watching an episode of a TV show and you're having to make sure you knit while you do it. It's, it's kind of mm. busy work while you're just going through a story. But then I suppose um, the counter-argument there is that at the end of the day it is a game and it does require interaction. Games, by their very right. nature, have to have a point where you can fail. You don't necessarily need to have a lose condition, mm -hmm. but you would need a point of failure. But mm -hmm. then again, you could argue the other way, that why does a game really need that? Why can you not just take the idea of the Iron Man and just have a sequence of consequences that shapes the narrative, almost turning it into something like um, Heavy Rain would be a good mm -hmm. example. Uh, it is, I, th I think it is possible to just flat out lose Heavy Rain and just get a game over, but a lot of the really bad things that you can do in Heavy Rain have a tendency to just affect the outcome and the progress of the story, rather than um, just flat out say, that's it, you've lost, mm. go back to the start or reload your save. Yeah, well, I'm glad you brought up consequence because I think that's that's one of the um, key factors in the appeal of a lose condition, and I think the lose condition does it better than just having an outcome to your decisions. Um, games are, among other things, escapism. Whether you go into it thinking that or not, I've never sat down to play a game thinking, right, time for some escapism. Um, but I, oh my god, I've got rice in my water. That's horrific. <laughs> I just found grains of rice in my water. Um, Might be time to do the washing up. <laughs> um, yeah, but I've never sat down to play a game and thought, time for an escapist session. I'm going to escape from reality for a bit. But um, you know, we're all subject to forces: the government and work and taxes and. Family demands and I, so I on. I think the order and... that you put those in might actually <laughs> say a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps. Um, but games give you an opportunity to do things that you can't otherwise. They make you potent. Mm. Um, Skyrim, we've already brought that up, is a prime example where you can have an effect that ranges from small effects on the lives of characters to changing the face of the world and anywhere in between as you see fit, essentially. Um, this is something that most of us will never get to do. You know, most of us will not shape the face of global events or national events or even regional events. Most of us will have no impact on anything beyond our immediate surroundings. Bleak though that sounds. Um, and I think, personally, that the lack of a lose condition kind of dilutes this. You were talking about your decisions having consequence, and that's what I'm getting at here. The consequence of your decision, your ability to have an impact on things in a way that you can't in your real life, um, is badly diminished if it's not possible to lose. Hmm. Because your decisions and your actions don't have weight anymore. You can pretend they do, but... If it's not possible for you to fail, for you to cock things up so completely irrevocably that everything is an irredeemable mess, and you're dead and everything is all over, there's, there's no weight. And yeah. this escapism just deteriorates and fizzles out. I've been watching um, Star Trek TNG, and there's actually a couple of episodes revolving around that principle. Uh, the chief one, I think, being where uh, Riker is given the power of Q. And he just turns around to all of the crew members and says, right, you know, I'll, I'll give you anything you want. Absolutely anything you want. And they just turn around and say, well, no, half of the fun <laughs> is actually the, the, the struggle of getting it. And, uh, well, I'm not entirely convinced on that message. I mean, if someone offered to just, you know, put a few million in front of <laughs> in my bank account, I would probably, 
I'd probably accept it, uh, truth be told. But I, I, I take the uh, the principle of that one. And again, it comes back to the idea of the game, and the game is important. And without the challenge, what you've essentially got is not necessarily something that's less worthwhile, but certainly something that's very, very different. Yeah. I mean, I, I mentioned um, an increasing sort of confluence of TV and games, in a sense, where it's becoming a visual storytelling medium, or some types of games are. And I don't mean to imply that that's inferior entertainment. Um, but you, you can sit and have an enjoyable experience um, watching and having some minimal interaction with a game, in inverted commas. Um, but you don't get, as you said, satisfaction, achievement, some sense of having worked for something. I mean, as an example, if you've played through a game that's kind of unfailable, there's no real lose condition, you've just been you know, gradually progressing, you get to the end, you don't go, I finished that, I feel fantastic. You get the same thing as when you've just watched the film that you've been meaning to watch for a while. You might go, I enjoyed that, that was good, move on. Mm. You don't have that achievement and yeah. sense of progress. You have the and satisfaction games... of a story well told, but not the satisfaction of a challenge overcome. Exactly. Unless the movie you were watching was Battlefield Earth. <laughs> Definitely a challenge overcome. Um, whether that's worthwhile is a different matter. And I believe Battlefield Earth can cause permadeath. Um, <laughs> but um, there's... I want to point out that this, this idea of um, achievement and progress is something that is, I think, to an extent being manufactured in a lot of games that don't have a conventional lose condition. Um, you get a lot of games that include you know, level systems of one sort or another. You gain stats, or you unlock equipment as you go along. You acquire skills. Even multiplayer-centric games have the, the popular sort of unlocking things as you go along, get more kit hmm. as you play the game. And my feeling is that this is an artificial, an artificial sense of progress. You're not getting a sense of progress or getting better at anything or achievement from experiencing the game. So the game has to give you it. If you're yeah. playing a game with a permanent lose condition, then you can get further or you can get to the same point more quickly, more efficiently, something of that nature. You can feel yourself getting better. Like when you're learning to drive, and after a few months you go, I just drove to the next village and I don't even remember doing it. That's amazing! Six months ago I couldn't even turn a corner. Now I'm you able know, to drive to... so wasted that I can't even form memories! <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, but there's that tangible sense of progress, mm. and I think that a lot of games are having to insert that by giving you markers to say, look, you progressed! You've achieved. Here's a thing to show you you've progressed and achieved. Mm. Because you don't get it out of the game. Well, there's a, another particular genre and style of game that does uh, lend itself very well to the lose condition and it does actually get much better for it. The survival horror genre. Um, with survival horror, the entire idea behind it is that you are surviving. You are in fear of your life. You are in a hostile situation. And when you die, if you're able to just simply respawn from a checkpoint a minute ago, that fear is considerably lessened. Now, mm. obviously, you can compensate for that by um, good shot framing, good level design, good enemy design, well laid out control scheme. Resident Evil 4 does it quite interestingly with the control scheme where it's good enough that you can use it, but bad enough that it means that fights get a bit more tense. It's in that beautiful sort of butter zone. <laughs> but um, especially with the earlier Resident Evils and the whole idea of save points and the limited times that you can use those save points with the typewriter ribbons, it basically, it's almost having its cake and eating it in that you are able to save your progress of the game, but it overcomes the idea that it's completely nixing the lose condition. Okay, you have removed the lose condition, but you're not going to be losing you know, a couple of minutes of progress if you die. 
unless you step out of the save room and immediately get ganked. But uh, you're still losing a considerable amount of progress. Hmm. And I think that sort of hit a very, very, very happy point where you could lose, and losing did mean you had to replay sections of the game, but you weren't needing to replay the entire game, and you didn't need to go through the whole thing in one sitting. And the added bonus was that it meant that combat, as you said, did have weight and did have consequences, and it had actual weight and consequences, because if you failed, well, that was it. You actually did have a penalty for doing so. And um, one of the things about the utterly, utterly abysmal Resident Evil 6, uh, which really you can't say enough bad things about that game, <laughs> is that it had save points every two or three minutes, and it combined that with... Of, you know, utterly terrible everything. The, the, there was nothing that game did right. Nothing. I, I could rant about that game for half an hour in and of itself, but it just <laughs> I, took I so much it. away. Never played it. Probably for the best. It really is. Uh, that, that, oh, God. No, I, I, don't, I don't want to talk about it, otherwise I'm not going <laughs> to stop. I, I, but, I've heard many of your rants before. We don't want to open that door. Yes. There's no, there's no stuffing that particular genie back in the bottle. <laughs> But yeah, um, the survival horror genre is one that does lend itself quite well to the idea of a lose condition because it instills an actual legitimate fear in you. Not just a fear that's generated by the art direction of the game, but an actual fear that you personally, as a real person, will lose something. It's, it's interesting that you brought up the old Resident Evils, actually. I hadn't thought of that particular example because survival horror... Um, with a lose condition suffers from the same um, deficiency that, as you mentioned, are mitigated by the brevity of games like Sonic the Hedgehog and Mario and so on in the early days. Um, in that if you have a permanent lose condition in a survival horror game, you have to replay it from the beginning and you lose all of the horror aspects. It becomes less tense. And that solution in the early Resident Evils is a really interesting one and now you've mentioned it I'm surprised we haven't seen more of that mm. because limiting your number of saves as you said adds this tension and weight to your actions um, it... but at the same time if you play Resident Evil the way I did um, you do you get frustrated with how you squandered your saves and start over from the beginning yeah um, so actually the way you save becomes a tactical part of playing the game. Exactly. And, and it's, that, it, that could be a really interesting way to work consequences into more games. I think it's just, um, in many respects now, just fallen out of vogue, basically, because of the fact that the lose condition, in any sort, in any form, is becoming harder and harder, I think, for... Um, developers to push and get accepted because people are now getting a lot more used to the idea that a death in a video game or a loss of a level, loss of your mission is just yeah, two or three minutes of progress lost try it again and yeah. in some regards I think that's good because as games have become longer the content has also changed. No one gives a crap if you beat um, Green Hill Zone on Sonic no one gives a crap if you beat, um, what was it, uh, Aqua Labyrinth, Crystal Labyrinth? What was the one that was near the end of Sonic 1? Oh, yeah. Um, you know the one I mean, yes. one that was mostly underwater. No one gives a crap if you say that you can beat that specific level. People get impressed when you say you got that far, and if you can say you can complete the whole game, people get impressed. But there are very few... Um, specific instances in that game where people will actually give you kudos for getting that far. Now, with modern games, it's less that the entire game is a package, but more that you have points within it, if that makes sense. I'm not explaining this very well. Um, it's, a, it's like a theme park. It's a sequence of rides, and you gain satisfaction and kudos from completing certain parts and certain sections because there is so much content. And in many regards, to again come back to the idea of the Elder Scrolls games, the main story arc, in which you quote-unquote complete the game, is just one 
of those rides in that theme park. Whereas with the old games, the whole game itself was one ride. The goal, the objective, was to just complete that game. And consequently, having the lose conditions being what they were in those games, no more lives, no more continues, was conducive to actually having the whole game as the point, as the ride. Whereas with games these days, it's built around multiple smaller chunks of your time being spent, some of which are equivalent in length or even greater than length to a whole playthrough of Sonic on the Mega Drive. Um, the guild quests in Oblivion, I know that a lot of people like to, to bash on a, on Oblivion. Uh, personally, it's it's my favourite game, but well, out of the Tez games anyway, but um, I don't say that too often because people, people <laughs> try to kill me if I do that. But um, the, you can't fault the guild quests for the sheer epicness and um, sense of scale and achievement you get from them because it's literally hours and hours and hours of gameplay and working your way up through the ranks and doing all these different things, whereas with Skyrim's guild quests, hey, first quest, you turn up on the doorstep, quest five, congratulations, you're an archmage! <laughs> um, mm. So, in order to actually facilitate that sort of structure to the gameplay, you need those save points, and you can't have a lose condition. You could have a lose condition within the individual quests, within the individual blocks, but you can't put a lose condition on that entire playthrough as a whole. Yes, I, I can see your point. Um, it's making me think of Morrowind, since we're going down the Elder Scrolls route. Um, because I, I was just thinking about one of the guild quests in Oblivion. Um, which, um, <laughs> even though it's about 10 years old at this point, I'm not going to spoil it for people who may still not have played it. Which one are we talking uh, about here? Which guild, which guild quest? Um, the Brotherhood. Uh, um, yeah, the best one. But, yeah. Uh, but there was a point... Um, actually, there was a similar moment in Skyrim, come to think of it. Um, a point where I was trying to get somewhere in a hurry because an event was occurring that was yeah. urgent. Um, and I... I was making it tense myself by role-playing it. Yeah. In the sense where I thought, this this should be a tense scene... I could just quick travel to near there and then hop down the hill and I'll be there. But yep. I want to make this scene tense. I'm going to run cross country until I get there. And the tension, I had to insert my own tension because there was no way to fail that. I, I could have spent five hours going there and it would have been fine. Um, but it makes me think of Morrowind because that was the Elder Scrolls that I played first. And I was playing one of the expansions the Blood Moon expansion that takes you to Solstheim originally. And um, I accidentally killed a quest-centric person. And that was that. He was dead. Hmm. Um, you can just bump off anyone, anyone in Morrowind. Yeah. And if they're part of a quest, then that quest is buggered. Well, you can that. even kill some of the quest-givers from the main quest line, can't you? And that's it. Yeah. You can never actually complete the main quest yeah, line. Yeah, there, there's, there's actually a message if you kill someone who's integral to the main quest, it pops up and says something like, you've broken the chain of destiny and the world is going to fall into hell or something. Um, yeah. But it allows you to do it. Okay. Yeah, this, this has its drawbacks because obviously having put something like 150 hours into Morrowind at the point where I made that mistake and then accidentally saving over my save game instead of loading it. <laughs> oh! I, I, I was enormously infuriated. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if there was any, any <laughs> argument that we, that the lose condition could possibly be considered something that we can stand to get rid of, that was it. <laughs> that was it. We might as well end this here because 150 hours of gameplay down the toilet because you clicked save instead of load is... No. <laughs> Oh my uh, god. I've, I've never recovered. I've never managed to make myself <laughs> go through all that again to get back to that point in that quest oh and see god. it through to the end. Well, it reminds me of a funny little place, funny little um, incident that I had on Metro Last Light, which I was doing another playthrough of recently. There's a quest critical uh, NPC being held hostage by a guard. So I'm creeping up behind the guard and I think, right, uh, I'm just going to take a throwing knife and chuck it in his back and all will be well. Missed him. Hit the hostage. Unfortunately, because the hostage is plot critical, he wouldn't die. 
So uh, I threw a second throwing knife quite quickly, which hit the guard. And I go up, and then this guy's talking to me with a bloody great big throwing knife sticking out of his cheek. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing has happened. <laughs> Completely unfazed by this turn of events. Yeah, it was it was actually quite. I've got a few screenshots of it actually. I'll have to put them up with the video. <laughs> but, but, um, but has the lose? Con- do you think the lose the loss of the lose condition? Because I, I think we can agree that the lose condition is diminishing. Yeah. Um, I think that it's it's finding its niche, as you said earlier, in indie games and in other games. But it's still certainly been on the downswing from what it was. And I think we can kind of also agree that it was sort of necessary for this to happen in order for games to become what they are today and be as long as they are today and have the design that they do today. Is, can, is, is that fair to say? Or? Yeah, I think so. And I think it's before we sort of write the lose condition off as, as completely dead or mostly dead. He's only mostly dead. Mm. As a ref- um, for people who got that. Um, Mostly Dead is still slightly alive. <laughs> um, I, I think it's it's impo- important to observe that games where a lose condition or something approximating a lose condition fit naturally are still out there. Um, what's coming to mind right now, just because I've played it recently, is Crusader Kings 2, where there's it's hard to reach the lose condition. Um, I've actually never done it. From what I understand, it's basically if your entire dynastic line is wiped out, it has you're to be done. your specific bloodline memory source. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that you know that condition does exist, hmm. and there are what I consider to be to be my lose conditions for that game, which are ending up in a situation where I think I basically can't pull this back. Things have gone so far wrong that I'm I'm basically done. And I've had my the most fun in those conditions. Are... <laughs> I've been my the I've been are... the king of Poland and Bohemia. I've been busted all the way back down to count and made it back again. Oh. Um, but my point is that there are types of games, mm. styles of games, where. Um, a lose condition, or at least a serious consequence, debilitating consequence condition, is so naturally a part of the type of game that it doesn't need to be imposed in this slightly artificial, mechanical way that it's, is traditional. Where we it, say, you, you've expended your chances, you're done. Hmm. Um, where it's just in the nature of the game. So we're not, we haven't completely lost it. In places where it's natural and logical, it's still there. Mm. And it's uh, even in places where it is forced. Uh, you brought up earlier the XCOM remake, mm-hmm. and that has a lose condition, which I think is eight countries leave the XCOM project. Yeah, something and, like that. Like, and it also has what you were saying earlier about a condition where basically it's so screwed you're never going to recover it, which is usually you've had a really bad mission, you've lost all of your experienced squad members but the higher tier aliens have started appearing, so your rookies are not going to be up to the job. <laughs> yeah. You might as well finish it up. You're just uh, making it linger. And the fact that that game was so hugely popular, the fact that a turn-based strategy game was that popular warmed my heart. Um, <laughs> let alone the fact that it was a turn-based strategy game with a lose condition, with an Iron Man mode, and it was basically everything that people who complain about the loss of the lose condition wanted. And it was hugely popular. And I think maybe we might start seeing more games like that. Uh, Crusader Kings 2 um, ended up really, really popular for some reason. It, was, it wasn't huge. It wasn't you know, like COD numbers or SimCity. <laughs> but it was a much, much bigger project than I think Paradox ever dreamed that it could turn into. And that, as you say, had that sort of lose condition and complexity. So it's certainly not dead, but yeah. it has diminished, I would say, and it has changed, certainly. Now, I... go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, right. Um, I just want to mention that um, I, I think part of... One thing we haven't touched on so far um, is the simple practicality of not having a lose condition in Mm. a lot of games 
Um, there are so many releases now, games just coming out almost continuously, far, far more games released every year than anyone could hope to play. Yeah. There's no way anyone could play all of them. And I think it's become increasingly important um, from a player's point of view to be able to actually play some of them in that you, you don't want to spend... I mean, there are exceptions like Skyrim, which are just gigantic, but you don't want to have to spend, um, you know, 50 hours playing and replaying and reattempting a game mostly when there are others that you want to play. Everyone wants to... You know, this new game's just come out. It's fantastic. Everyone loves it. I want to play it, but I'm still trying to slog through this other thing. And there are odd ones. Um, really long games like Skyrim or the Iron man -y type games like XCOM. Um, but if all current game releases were like that, I think it would just be completely impractical. No one would be able to play anywhere near as many games, if that makes sense. I've articulated that quite badly, but I hope you see what I'm getting at. Yeah, um, yeah. That just purely from a, a consumption point of view, it makes more and more sense for games to be an experience that you can just get through, have the experience, and move on. Um, if you see what I'm getting at. I think I'd have to argue against that one. Because the, up to a point, you're certainly it's, cer it's certainly true. But some games, I think, are very long, sprawling sagas, and they need to be long, sprawling sagas, because that's what they're best at. Bethesda games, specifically. Especially, um, not Bethesda, but a good example... Fallout New Vegas mm -hmm. is a very, very long, sprawling, huge open world, and the whole point of the game is to be in that world and to explore it and to meet the people and to get the quests and to shoot them in the head and to do horrible <laughs> things to their corpses and, and so on and so forth. Um, but I certainly take your point that perhaps people just want to be able to pick up a game, play through it and finish it and move mm -hmm. on to the next one. But... I don't know, I think that if a game is special, and if a developer wants to make something special, he certainly should try. But yeah. that's me. Do you think yeah, that but... the... Um, do you think that the absence of the lose condition is making games easier? Or is it just making them more approachable and accessible? I think it's making them more... Um, packaged. You get a package game. Um, I suppose accessible as well, in the sense that you don't need to be, for the most part, you don't need to be afraid of going into a game wondering whether you're going to finish it. Um, because there's... Maybe it's just me who's thought about this. Someone else must have thought this as well. But if if you enter a game that's really hard mm. with a lose condition attached to it. And you can only get, you know, a quarter of the way through the game and you keep dying and having to redo that first quarter again. Um, you've kind of paid for a quarter of the game. Yeah. You Coming back to the Dara Brian sketch. Um, ah, okay. Um, so if, if you don't have a permanent lose condition like that, then you don't have this this issue of uh, do, do I want to spend fifty pounds or whatever on a game that I I might not even be able to finish? What if I only get halfway through, and then mm. I you know when you buy a game usually now you know you're going to get it, you're going to get through it, you're going to complete it, you're going to have the experience. So I think um, you have a packaged game in the sense of a game that is is a self-contained unit that you can just get through and enjoy, and you have more accessibility because you don't have to worry about whether you're blowing your cash on something that's going to thwart you and piss in your face at every turn. On the other Though hand, you like could that argue that putting down that initial investment of cash means that you're a lot more likely to try and actually go through it, and it'll be a lot more yeah. satisfying when you do overcome that sort of challenge. Perhaps. 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 Um... <laughs> Yeah. Well, we're getting up to um, our time now, so we're going to go for closing words. Is there anything that you'd like to end this uh, this discussion on? 
I'd like to end the discussion by um, indulging in a bit of my customary fence sitting, um, <laughs> which is essentially that um, I, I've argued, I think we've both argued bits and pieces of both sides of the debate here. And um, I do, like many people, lament the loss of the lose condition um, to an extent, the, the lack of consequence to some games. But at the same time, um, as I think you summed it up very well earlier, I think the deterioration of the lose condition has enabled games to become what they are now. And striking a balance between the types of games that would find a lose condition detrimental and the types of games where they're integrated and actually an enriching part of the experience. It, I think we can incorporate both of those, and that's probably the way we're going, okay. um, consciously or otherwise. Well, uh, that's a very, very good little summary. And all I can say to, to add to that is that I think that the lose condition still has its place, survival horror games being a prime example of that. And a lot of very, very good indie titles make excellent use of the lose condition as a means of just changing the game and presenting a new experience, bypassing a lot of the frustrations. So if there are people out there who do think that the, um, diminishing, the diminishing use of the lose condition is a bad thing, just remember that without it, we've been able to do a lot more with games. But I don't think it's even... I think we're putting the cart before the horse here. Games becoming what they have have necessitated the reduction of the lose condition. Removing a lose condition hasn't turned gaming into what it is today. It's a natural evolution of what gaming has become. And... I think people need to accept that, because as we've discussed, if you apply a lose condition to so many of the games that we play these days, they wouldn't be fun anymore, <laughs> and they wouldn't work. But uh, mm. anyway, uh, I'm Evis T for Evis T TV, signing off. Alan, last word. Um, thanks for having me, Evis. It's been a good discussion, as always, food for thought, and I hope people will be comfortable to weigh in with their own thoughts on this discussion. Well, the comments section is below for those of you who want to. I'll see you all soon. Bye for now, guys. <laughs> okay. Um, and then carry on. <laughs> oh, okay. Hang on, let me gather my thoughts there. I've lost the Yeah, no of problem. It. I'm editing this bit out anyway. Okay. Um, you were talking about talking uh, about? games locking, games and books. Books don't lock you out of the final chapter. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah okay.